Hey guys, I'm Cyborg Sheep, and welcome to the Weekend Post. In this episode, we're going to be tearing down this, this what uh, they now call call a string trimmer. This is not a string, string trimmer as you can see. It's actually, it actually uses um, these plastic blades right here, which at, right at the moment are dull. They don't, they don't cut any grass, they're pretty much at this point useless. Um, now, we have tried to take the um, end off here, this little plas plastic shroud. However, um, it's put so tightly on there that you can't get it off. It's uh, kind of impossible. So we pretty much resigned not to repair this thing. Um, and it's pretty much, um, at this point, garbage. Um, but however, uh, being an electronics enthusiast, and electronics are never garbage, there's always something salvageable, at least in my mind. So let's take this thing apart, see what we can find. Now, I don't know if you can see in there, but, um, tools nowadays use, um, Torx screwdrivers. This is a flathead screwdriver, and these these screws are actually combination Torx and flathead. So thankfully, don't gotta go out and buy a Torx set. So let's just start taking things apart here. Okay, and we are in. So there we go. So here you can see, here's the motor. Oh man, that's heavy. Here's the switch, whoa. So, as we can see, um, I've got the, um, I don't know, clamshell apart, and, um, something interesting about these, about these tools is, um, there'll be a marking, um, and that marking on here, not, not like this, that I think, uh, indicates what time it was molded at, but there is another marking um it's basically like a code in in between two uh greater than or less than brackets um and it indicates what kind of plastic this is because plastic it's not just plastic um there's lots of different types so there's abs there's um abs which is basically uh for example like I think, uh, think maybe like the, the pipe, like the plastic piping, um, or also there's PA6, which is nylon, uh, which most, in most cases, for tools at least, is reinforced with glass fiber. And it's basically the same thing as, um, fiberglass. And basically, when they fill it with glass fibers, um, it makes it really, like, it really rigid. Um, now, I'm just, like, flexing the case here, like, squeezing the case, and I can't really tell what this is. 
I can't see any marking in here uh, about what it could be. So it could be ABS, it could be um, uh, nylon GF30. Um, I don't know. So here's the electrical system. As you can see, it just goes, you start, you put your plug in here and it provides power uh, into here, and that's the power cord here. Um, looks to be... Let's see here... I don't know if you can see that, but that right there right beside my finger that's an 18 American wire gauge so that's decent um, of course the lower the number uh, with wires uh, the lower the number on the uh, American wire gauge which is basically the thickness of the wire so the lower the number the thicker the wire um, the more power it can conduct obviously um, then it goes through this switch uh, I'm not so sure. It looks like it's a uh, 125 volt or 250, depending on where you are. They're, they'll wire it differently because uh, something interesting also is that here, if you'll recall, we have uh, 120 volts. So they make their switches for a slightly higher voltage just to be able to say if there's like a spike in the line voltage um, it uh, it can handle that um, it also looks like it's rated for 16 to 8 amps or something like that it's also marked the load in the line terminals so where you'll wire in your uh, two wires and then it goes to the motor um, and this is heavy I mean really heavy um, now on some of these um, they'll actually dip the um, motor into a uh, like it's it's like this varnish and basically what it does it makes this coil these coils one solid instead of like a bunch of strands of wire it turns it into one solid unit it makes it much more uh, um, rigid um, so back there that's that's what something that we call a commutator in the brushes now this some um, this system right here it's really simple but it's not as um, it's, it's not, it doesn't really last all that long. Um, this system back here, um, there's a lot of energy loss in there. And in fact, this is what's going to wear out the most on you. And as, and looking at the case, on, on some of the tools, they'll have like a screw that you can just like put like, you know, a file in or something, and you'll be able to take those brushes out and replace them with new ones because um, these mo don't get me wrong these motors last a really long time however they, they don't last um, as long as say you know your RC brushless motor um, there is these do tend to wear out so um, what some tools will do is they'll they'll put screws in the casing so you can access these brushes. Um, but on this tool, you can't do that. So if your if your uh, brushes ever wear out, um, you're pretty much uh, pooped. You may as well just throw it out and buy a new one. Um, now, in the future. Uh, I might try to repurpose that motor uh, for use um, 
for use in a future project. I won't spoil it, but let's move on with the teardown. So now this here, um, this tube that transmits the rotation to the uh, uh, weed whipper end here, um, this is very confusing, like at this bend at least, because I'm, I can't quite understand how the rotation goes on this curve. There would probably like be some like U joints or uh, like some sort of uh, contraption that can go around this curve and still be able to transmit rotation. Um, so yeah, that's basically the whole tool. Um, so yeah. Now, something else interesting, but a couple more interesting things about this motor, actually. Um, as you can see, um, I had a, um, on, on my other pro motor, this has actually been a problem. Um, but on this one, they fixed it. Um, I don't know if you can see, but this isn't one big chunk of metal, uh, which, which we call steel. It's actually a bunch of separated, uh, what we call laminations. And basically what laminations are, they're basically just a bunch of plates. And what we do is we put them, to, put them together so that they're conical or so that they're flush with each other. And then what they do is this sort of blue line, blue shiny line going down the center. What they do is they weld this this assembly together so that uh, when you, say when you take the screws out of there, um, this assembly stays put together. It doesn't fall apart like uh, I've been having problems with uh, with another project. Another interesting thing about this is this is actually a universal motor. Even though it's running off AC, which AC, it's basically going back and forth 60 times a second, 60 hertz as you'll commonly hear. Um, this can actually run off of DC. Now, I don't have the, the, the uh, stuff to show you that right now. However, um, I'll try my hardest um, when I, whenever I tear down maybe, I don't know, some other tool. Um, I'll try my hardest to show you how, how this can work on DC instead of AC. Now before this video ends, dudes, I actually just thought of something. And I might actually be able to um, run that motor um, off DC. I have this uh, 9.6 volt uh, RC battery here. It might just be able to supply the current um, in order to run it. Um, so I'm going to charge this up and see, see if I can't uh, get it to work. Alright, so we have the motor clamped in the vise. Got the switch right down there. Over there we got our plug and the fully charged battery. Let's hook it up. Like so. And like so. Okay. Here we go. enough power. Alright, well, it's final. That can't, can't run this motor right here because not enough current. We need more current. If I had a 12 volt lead acid battery, that would more than likely su supply the current, but I don't, so um, we can't run it. So I guess let, let's end it off there. Alright guys, so there you go. That's my teardown of the Ryobi Weed, uh, weed Whipper. Um, a couple of things to mention dudes before I sign off. Um, today is Canada Day. Um, 
at least the day uh, that I'm that I'm talking about this. Um, uh, so happy Canada Day to all you guys out there. Um, also, um, this week, um, everybody will be officially finished all your exams. I want to congratulate all of you. I had one exam. It took four hours to do. <laughs> It was really hard, but I did it. It was a 63, ended up to be in math, uh, so I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you dudes in the next episode.